Mom, Mom, Mommy, Editor-in-Chief of Parents Latina, Grace Bastidas, join us, joins us for a candid conversation about the beauty and challenges of raising multicultural and bilingual children. We've heard all about the benefits for, of raising, hold on a second, we've all heard about for children. Okay, just kidding. <laughs> We've heard all about the benefits. That's, that's okay. He'll do it. He, he'll get it. We've heard we've heard all about the benefits for children to master more than one language. But what's it like to incorporate various cultures in one day to day? Grace is here to share her personal journey as a mom of two beautiful American Colombian British girls. Okay, now our motherish opening, yes. and then we start. So hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode. Um, we have a great guest today. I'm so excited. Yes, I'm super excited about our guest today. And um, I actually like on the way for to us like record or whatever, I was listening to her podcast, um, which is called That New Mom Life. And I was really into it. Uh, and it was making me reflect and actually inspired my motherish moment of today. What is your motherish moment of the week? Okay, my motherish moment of the week is that I'm starting to forget dramatic pause. Um, I realize now, so Juan has this ridiculous app that like, literally, I don't think anyone uses this anymore. He has to be the only person <laughs> who uses it called time hop, which like everybody used to use like, oh yeah, yeah, like five think, years ago. Yeah. Right. Um, so <laughs> he still uses it like religiously every day. So he started showing like every single day, he's like, look, whatever. And he's showing me photos from two years ago, which is exactly when Victoria was like, you know, brand spanking new, newborn, whatever. And there are photos that he shows me that I no longer remember or like moments that I'm like, because before, you know, it was such, it's a, it was a much shorter time. So like, it's easy to be like, I remember that outfit. I remember that shirt. I remember that day, but now he'll show me things. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't yeah. remember. And it's like, it oh, got you a little sad. I'm like, yeah. Uh, so it got me a little sad, but also I'm like, maybe that's how people have another kid. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It must be that way because if I remember everything, <laughs> I won't do it. But um, yeah, so that's my mother's moment. I'm starting I to forget what things. I was wearing like last week. So I'm oh, sure no, I'm be, like, I get like, I have, like soon. attachments to like this outfit that I put on. I used to remember even like exactly who gave her every single thing she wore. And I would send the person a photo that day, like the socks you gave her. He looked, he shows me, and I'm like, no okay. idea, no idea. Um, but, but I, I do realize that in this, it's almost like we're at the one month part, like the one month, like when she was one month old. Right. And at this kind of start of the photos is when I start looking real crazy. So it was the beginning, <laughs> it was the beginning of the tricky time. Okay. So my motherish moment of the week, um, it's a, it's a high one. So my son turned one recently. Um, and I just feel like the last few weeks after his birthday, he's like a big boy. And now he has this new little smile where he kind of shows all his teeth at the same time, mm -hmm. which is not that cute, but it's the same time it's, it melts my heart. Um, and he always like, I guess it's his way of making me laugh. He's like, mm, he does like this little face and then he like shows all his he's teeth. He's very coqueto. Yeah, he's, he's very coquette. funny. And he's just like, I don't know. It's just his personality. It, it, it's it's fun. It's, he's in a very fun yeah. stage right now. He's about to walk. So he takes like five steps and he tumbles down and he kind of laughs. Um, but I'm enjoying him, but I am realizing that like, he's, he's losing more of like his baby little, I mean, he's still my baby, but you know, sometimes I look at him and I'm like, oh, you're so big. Like I held him last night. I think I, I think like, I texted yeah, you, you afterwards. Mm -hmm. he, he was crying for a little bit and I kind of like, which he barely ever, ever wakes up at night. So I rushed to his, to his crib and I picked him up for a little bit and I just, I mean, he fell asleep right away and I could have just put him back in his crib. <laughs> and I was like, nope. I want this Take moment. it in. I want it for me. Yes. I want it. And I was just so selfish. And I was like, I just want to hold you. So I held him for like 30 minutes. And then I put him in his crib and I, I got very emotional. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, it's the best. Awesome. The, the cuddles are the best. I mean, you're speaking to someone who still crawls into her know, daughter's bed like, every day. He's sleeping. He's already <laughs> in, like aware of the moment right now. Yeah. But it's just for me. It was a moment just for me. Good. So that was my mother's of the week. So before we formally introduce our guest, we're going to go ahead and ask her to share her mother's moment of the week. Hi, Grace. Welcome. Hi, ladies. How are you? <laughs> Thank you for having me on. I'm very excited. Um, so my motherish moment of the week, I would have to say is 
watching my six-year-old who's in kindergarten walk in confidently in her school. Mm. We, we started out remotely this year and then started doing two days a week. And now she's five days and she's had a little bit of separation anxiety. And, you know, there were tears, there was, I don't want to go. And, and now one week into our, our um, five days a week, she is just walking in there, doesn't even turn around. I say goodbye, you know, give her a hug, um, give her la bendición. I don't know if you guys do that. <laughs> I sort of adapted that during this pandemic. Um, and just watch her walk in and, and wait there for her to turn around and wave and she doesn't. And I am totally cool with that because that just means she feels good. That's and, a big deal. You know, it's, it's, it sets her up for a good day. So I'm always happy to see that. Amazing. That's, that is, that's a, that's a big milestone. Yeah. Like, I, off to school. Bye. No, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's introduce Grace. She is a founding editor of Parents Latina, also has editorial oversight of the Spanish language brand Ser Padres. Prior to joining uh, Meredith, she served as a deputy editor of Latina Magazine. She's also written for the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal, among other publications. On her free time, Grace is an ambassador for the Good Plus Foundation and a native from New York. She lives in Brooklyn with her husband and two young daughters. So welcome, Grace, to Motherish Moments. I am especially excited about having you because every time we have someone who professionally consumes and understands the content, right, of what Latinx moms are dealing with and what they're looking for, and also be able to share her personal testimony as a mother herself, mm -hmm. I think it's like a win-win for yeah, everyone. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, alignment of like stars coming together. Um, and also like, what an impressive background. Like I, that's, that's the kind of thing that had I like listened to this in my, you know, late teenage years or early twenties, I would have been like, I want to be like that. <laughs> I want to have that. I want that to be my bio. <laughs> so congrats for that. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It is uh, really gratifying to do something that I love. And that really matches my lifestyle as a mom and a very involved mom raising multicultural children. So I always say I get to think about my kids at work and I get to think about my work at home because so much is inspired by my day to day. Yeah. And we've heard so many times, right? We've been programmed to, to kind of accept and acknowledge the fact that it's very beneficial to have children who master more than one language. Um, but it's also kind of hard, I think, for some people and the challenges of it is how do you incorporate, incorporate it on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. without being, um, I guess, too over the top, right? Like, are we doing, este es el paso, this is the cup. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> how, does, how could one do it organically, Grace, so that it kind of, blends into your day-to-day -day effortlessly? I, I will say it's not easy. So when I had my daughter, my oldest daughter, eight years ago, I spoke to her in English, right? That was the language that just came easier to me. Um, my husband's from England, so I wanted him to understand, you know, if I needed something. Um, and then fast forward and I had my tia, my aunt, as my babysitter. And Spanish and your Colombian language. background, right? My yes, I am very Colombian. So you know, and just to backtrack a little bit, I I, I was raised in a Colombian bubble. You know, first generation immigrant. You go to school, you see kids from other you know other ethnicities, and you go home, and we're eating the Colombian food, we're listening to the music. That's where mm -hmm. we travel on our holiday vacations. Um, so anyway, so I I quote unquote hired my aunt to be the babysitter. So I started speaking in Spanish and I realized that I'm used to speaking to an older generation in Spanish because I spoke to my parents. I spoke to my mm -hmm. grandparents. I did not speak to a little baby. So when I would call my, my tiny baby, mi amor, mi amorcita, I was like, oh, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> who are you pretending to be? <laughs> um, so it just took consistency. So I mm -hmm. kept at it. And, you know, I, I, it, like I said, it takes a lot of work, especially when kids start to get a little bigger and they're saying like, what is that? And what do you call that? And, you know, they ask a million questions. And I just remember there were times where they're like, what's that animal? And I'm like, oh gosh, raccoon. How does one say raccoon? <laughs> like this is, this is vocabulary that I never learned. So I had to kind of educate myself and constantly look up words that I, I wasn't saying as a kid. I wasn't saying to you know, the elder generation. 
And then there was a hurdle that my husband does not know Spanish. I mean, he's sort of, I always joke around that it's like he's living in like a Latin American country for the last eight years. He's been immersed <laughs> in this because I, I do not break from this, you know, Spanish speaking rule as hard as it gets or I've just kept on it for eight years. And oh, okay, so eventually you did, you did the do the pivot, switch yeah. into the Spanish language. I did. I did. I did the switch to be able to communicate with my aunt who came during my, I, I was lucky enough to have maternity leave and she came during that time. So I felt like I need her to understand. So we sort of got into a rhythm with the Spanish and then just thinking about myself and I had already embarked on this on this job. I had just, I actually was three months pregnant when, when I was hired to be the editor of Parents Latina. Wow. So I was sort of molding what was important to me. And as I looked at my own upbringing, living in this Colombian bubble, immersed in the culture, I thought my kids are not going to have the same thing. And as we move forward in generation from generation to generation, mm -hmm. I could harder. see that culture slipping by. And for me, it just shapes so much of who I am as a person to be able to interact with different cultures, to appreciate diversity, um, it, that I just wanted the same thing for my children, especially having three cultures, right? The Colombian culture, the American culture, and the English culture. I wanted mm -hmm. them to be able to embrace all of them. And I knew English was going to come. I wasn't worried that, oh, if I speak Spanish to them, they're not going to understand English. <laughs> In it's, fact, they were they were speaking the, the Queen's English. They were saying tomato instead of tomato. <laughs> <laughs> it's important you mentioned culture because I think more than just the language is kind of incorporating the culture and traditions and the colors of the, the different traditions. I think maybe that's probably a bigger challenge sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I, I struggle with this, not, not struggle, but it's almost like a, a juggling act, right? So I have, my parents were both born in Peru but my dad has a very heavy influence from his dad, from my paternal grandfather, who was Cuban. So, for example, although we're Peruvian, our Christmas, you know, Noche Buena 24th dinner is all Cuban. We're talking about like black beans, rice, lechon, like in La Caja China, it's very Cuban. Um, and then on my mom's side, um, you know, she's Peruvian. And then there is like an Italian kind of influence there from her, her, I guess side of the family um but then my husband is very very proud <laughs> argentinian right and so like then there's victoria which is like poor girl like literally she's like i'm like oh mommy quieres un postrecito te doy fresas and then there comes juan eh, and he's like um uh what does he call him freaking frutisha frutisha <laughs> and she's looking at us like can you guys just settle <laughs> on what the hell you want to call it? <laughs> you know, my nanny's from Argentina and I've had, she's been our nanny for a while. And, you know, I forgot to incorporate her culture because my daughters do say campera yeah, yeah. instead of yeah. checking, uh, you know, they say words where I'm like, they only say that in Argentina. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, our nanny is from Honduras. And so Victoria, huge fan of tortillas, pupusas. Like this is what she wants for dinner the majority of the time. Um, so it's honestly, I, I really like it brings me so much joy if I have to be completely honest, like to bring all of these different things together. I do feel that at some point um, it might be challenging in terms of of when she's trying to figure out her identity. Cause I, I struggle with that. Like I still struggle with that. And that's one of the things that when I met my husband, I was like, God, you're so lucky. Like, you know what you are like, <laughs> you know, culturally, like you have, it's super clear. But for me, it was always like, I don't know, like a uh, uh, stadium, uh, what do you call it? Stadium rock or whatever. Like, I don't know. Like I could listen to everything from like uh, the Eagles to then like, why no peruano to that? But I like, think it's just maybe, all over the place. I think maybe what, what Grace is doing at her household, which is kind of just like accept everything and not just kind of be defined by one specific yeah, culture. It's the right. I think maybe it's our right. children and the future generations are, you know, they're growing up with yeah. all this multicultural exposure. And I think it's only going to be beneficial to them so that they don't feel like they have to choose. Like, For sure. okay, am I Peruvian? I mean, where's my llama? Where's my thing? Where's my ceviche? <laughs> like, we don't have to. And when I say that it's becoming harder too, I think even for myself, I mean, I'm Peruvian um, and uh, 
it you know so it's ford i guess is first generation american actually mm-hmm. yeah gringo <laughs> i know so um i think it's getting harder in the sense of for example like when i try to find myself connecting to my culture like i want him to feel proud pride and be proud to be peruvian but i sometimes have a hard time okay like i don't really cook that well so do i need to go find peruvian you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah. i wish Just i had like my mom's house we got I know you. i need to i you. wish i had like you know maybe like your tia like grace that you had your aunt around to have kind of like that presence that was symbolic a concentrated like culture yeah. yeah like i wish I had someone in my household who was more yeah um not Peruvian, but I'm saying that that was maybe more of a reminder that will help him yeah, feel yeah, more yeah. connected. That's, yeah. that's where I, I struggle a little bit. But I think we have to relax, right? If we're raising totally. kids in the United States, they're going to just be a big old mix of different cultures. And, you know, the idea of identity is shifting even mm-hmm. as we speak. So yeah. they can, they probably can identify in 15 different ways when they're bigger, you For know, sure. when, they, when, as they grow up. So I don't so think it's a millennial you know, issue. I, I, I too had that kind of like, am I Colombian? I actually would say I was Colombian. And I remember um, being at my first job, I was like 20 something. And, and this editor said to me, when did you come here from Colombia? And I thought, what? I'm from Queens, New York. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a real moment for me because I always thought I'm Colombian and that Colombian pride. And to this day, I am very proud of my heritage. But I also know that, you know, like you, Pamela, I don't really cook Colombian food. I The only thing I cook comes out of a cookbook that I could follow the recipe. And when I call my tia to say like, hey, how do you make this? And she says a little of that and a little of this. I'm like, forget it. <laughs> how, do, how do your daughters identify themselves? Like, what do you, where do you see them kind mm-hmm. of? Um, I don't, they, they haven't really grasped onto what that is. My little one is very close to her dad. So she's six. And she talks about England all the time. Aww. The last time she was there, I think she was like two. So I don't know what stories she's telling about England. <laughs> but the teachers always say, oh, yes, uh, you know, Stella always talks about England. Um, I think so they, traveling is important, though. Remember yeah. you mentioned when she traveled. Oh, yes. I think they, once we start traveling to get them to visit our, you know, Peru mm-hmm. and to visit like other countries, I think it's, it's a big connection for them. For sure. They went to, I took them to Colombia two years ago. Um, pre-pandemic, thankfully, and yeah, they were able to slot right in. Yeah, they speak some Spanglish because it happens, you know, mm-hmm. they don't, if they don't remember where, they just keep going and they toss in some English, but everybody was like, wow, your kids, they can speak, and he doesn't speak any Spanish. That was really mind-boggling for anybody who encountered us as a family, like, he, how does he communicate with the rest <laughs> of you? I'm like, that is the secret to our success. <laughs> What advice do you have, Grace, for for your spouses who don't speak Spanish or, you know, or different culture? Like, what's the best way to support each other? I think you kind of just let everybody do the language that they want to speak. When we come together at the dinner table, we have a cohesive conversation. And at this point, my husband does understand. And, you know, and thinking about things in context, he can chime in and the girls love to translate for him. Like, they just like think it's hilarious. Um, but we were able to sit down, have a meal and have a full conversation. And it's just really about the other appreciating and respecting that culture yeah. and really acknowledging the importance of passing it on. For me, English culture is really important. I can't wait to get back to England and have the girls experience that way of life mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. think you know, in essence, they're going to be more empathetic people, be curious about the world, be curious about different cultures. And all of this will just help. That's why, you know, initially, when my nanny would speak to them with words that, you know, frutilla and campera and and (laughs) pileta, and I I don't even know what those words mean anymore. Uh, I would be like, es fresa, es chaqueta. And then I was like, you know what, no. whatever, you know, there yeah. are going to be a huge mix of cultures and they go and they're, they're actually in school doing 50% in Spanish. And oh, the school awesome. also has a French program and they're like, when are we going to learn some French around here? Yeah. <laughs> so they're just, they're already curious. And that was something that I had as a kid growing up in New York and just being exposed to all these different cultures. And, you know, I always talk about grade school for me was it was like the United Nations because it was all a bunch of first generation kids dressed in their native garb. 
<laughs> and they would bring their native foods to lunch. It wasn't like just pizza and sandwiches. It was like they were having whatever their their moms or dads cooked. I'm being generous with the dads here. This was <laughs> That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was just normal. So whenever when, the first time I ever left New York, I was like, whoa, culture shock. I've been sheltered my whole life. The world does not look like this. The, the United States does not look as diverse as this is. It's true. And it's true. It should take a moment to kind of be, feel grateful also and, and blessed to be growing up in Miami, which is also a very multicultural, very colorful, diverse um, city. And I think sometimes we don't, we lose perspective of how tough it could be in other places. Of, you know, 100%. In the States. Yep. Yep. I have a, a, a fun anecdote that has just started happening in the last like week or so. So my daughter goes to the park to play. She has a group of, of little friends of her age or a little bit older. And one of the girls, her name is Alice. Um, she only speaks English, but her and Alice are like BFFs. They're like inseparable. I don't know how they communicate. I have watched like Alice speaks in English and Victoria responds in Spanish. But now um, the other day, you know, we speak Spanish to Victoria, only Spanish as much as possible, yet we speak English with each other. So I don't know how that's all kind of working out. But um, I go, mommy, vas a ir al parque a ver a tu amiga Alice. And she goes, mama, Alice, no, Alice. And I was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I will go back to the rock where I should live under. Like, she is just what Grace mentioned. I think once they start school, they pick up English so yeah, fast. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah, yeah. And now, like, if she hears us speaking English, she'll chime in and she'll be like, "Let's go this for our turn." But she says it with such like confidence that she's like, "No turn." And I'm like, "You're not saying yeah. anything." But okay, that was me when I got to this country, like, <laughs> making up words all the time. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's really interesting what you said about you and your husband, both the Spanish speakers speaking to each other in English. And I think you've hit upon something because it's so difficult to code switch once we've established a language with yes. somebody. Yes. So, you know, that's why I can't even speak in English to my kids, because at this point, even though they're like, the jig is up, we know you speak English. <laughs> we're on to you. <laughs> we're on to you. But because initially I would say like, yeah, no entiendo, no entiendo. And they're yeah. like, uh, yes, entiendes, entiendes. Yes. But I can't stop it because I've already established this as the language mm -hmm. that we speak. Mm -hmm. And I see it with my with my eight-year-old where you know, she's getting bigger and she has thoughts and emotions. And I don't really want that to be a barrier between us. If she doesn't know the words in Spanish, Sometimes I'm like, say it in English, say it in English. Like if she's feeling a certain <laughs> right. way. Right, yeah. And then she's just like, uh, she's frozen. Like she can't do it with me either. So that's just really interesting. Oh, wow. So I'm trying to see how we can better our communication because I do know that as girls get older, right. you, know, mm -hmm. you, you want to feel have more comfortable that. in English and have a better vocabulary. Well, or well, you want to have this feeling. They, are, they have big feelings and you want to mm -hmm. have this open communication with your kids that isn't stifled by language. Mm -hmm. And I know that my eight-year-old may not know how to say certain things. So I'm just trying to see how we establish our communication in a way that makes her feel like she can talk to me about anything, mm -hmm. which I think is even more important than language. So, you know, I've gone this far and yet I'm like, oh boy, I don't want this to stand in our way. No, but it's crazy because it's, it's hard to reprogram the brain because what you mentioned, like I guys only spoken to my mom, um, obviously in Spanish my entire life. My sister who was born in the States, she's 10 years younger, also grew up just speaking Spanish. So we never even realized my mom actually spoke some English, right? Because <laughs> we were never exposed to it. And so one time we heard her argue with like, I think someone from like the electric bill <laughs> in English. And I remember the, the phase, my sister's phase, like the moment we realized, oh my we're God. Like, like, oh my God. <laughs> yes, because we were so programmed to just only yeah. speak Spanish to her. And she obviously only spoke Spanish to us that we never really imagined her speaking English. It was like such a bizarre moment for us. Um, and now with Ford, so Ford's dad doesn't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at the beginning he was trying to. And one time I, I caught him reading to him like, el gato quiere leche. And I was like, okay, no, no, bad Spanish. <laughs> yeah. It's like not an option. Like we're good, we're good. Right. So then I read into it and it was like, kind of like what you guys are doing is like one parent, one language. So he'll do English only and I'll do Spanish only. And I, I guess a baby will eventually, his brain will pick up that this is the parent who I speak Spanish yeah, with. Yeah. And this is the parent that I speak English. With. But he was also concerned. He's like, I want, I want to be able to communicate with him and mm -hmm. kind of share moments with him. Um, and since everyone else speaks in Spanish to him, like, I don't want to be left out, but right. 
Um, yeah. My mom, you know, that's, oh, go ahead. I was going to say that's just super interesting. That's one of my biggest takeaways is how we acquire language because I grew up speaking both English and Spanish. I don't remember ever like, okay, now I'm learning Spanish or, right. you know, so, so, natural. so to see kids and that you're doing all this work and you're like, is this even going through, you know, this, this is a baby. They don't understand mm -hmm. me, but then just to see how they instinctively know who speaks what language and mm -hmm. when they have to like make that switch is really mind boggling. Yeah. When I was um, little and I was just learning to talk and everything, my parents only spoke Spanish. So they had just gotten here from Peru. And then when I was four, I started going to school or daycare or whatever. And that's where I learned English. And my mom says that I came back from school, like, let's say two or three weeks, four weeks into it. I came back and I said, mommy, yo soy Americana. And she was like, oh, really? And I go, mommy, look, I have yellow hairs. I have some, because I had random, like, you know, <laughs> from the sun, whatever, slightly uh, blonde within all the brown. I was like, mommy, look, 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 I soy Americana. I speak English. And she goes, en esta casa se habla español. Y si quieres algo, tienes que pedir en español. And I'm like, okay, um, mommy, I'm hungry. I want this. She goes, no entiendo, no entiendo. <laughs> Meanwhile, my dad was desperate to learn English. So he would literally... I mean, he's going to kill me if he hears this. Um, my mom makes him hear the podcast sometimes, so he might hear this. But he used to study the dictionary in the bathroom and then come out and try to practice English with me. And she would be like, what are you doing? You're ruining this. But somehow it all kind of worked out. And like we all but you have a beautiful Spanish. So let's give your mom credit for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's all my mom, because my mom was super strict with it until, like you said, then we realized, I'm like, I know you understand me. <laughs> 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 but, um, but yeah, super interesting topic. And I think, you know, there's, there's so much to kind of say about it. And um, I think my takeaway from our conversation is how we need to relax and embrace all the cultures. And I, just in listening to you, I have like a new perspective where I'm like, you know what, how amazing that Victoria is going to know casaca chaqueta mm -hmm. and jacket whatever <laughs> miriam like and jacket and whatever our nanny also says like because then one day if she happens to do you know business in latin america she'll be like i understand all of you and it'll be so great and yeah. if, even if she doesn't do that that's fine too <laughs> yes you know i i in a long long time ago pre-children um, I took a sabbatical from, from my first job in my twenties. I needed a sabbatical just to travel, <laughs> just to travel around Latin America. And I did this by myself, even though oh, I was like, so I, was, I was, I was really nervous. And my mom said, you don't have to go anywhere. And I was like, I told people I would, so I'm, I'm going to do this. <laughs> um, but I traveled through like Chile, Argentina, all these countries, Uruguay. And I was able to slot myself in all these countries, speak to people, yeah. feel like I can actually be comfortable on my own. This was the first mm -hmm. time I was traveling solo, but because I knew the language and because I knew different ways of saying things, living in New York, you kind of learn to communicate with different people. I just felt like, wow, I'm able to go, somebody invited me to a house party. I'm going to a house party in Chile, <laughs> you know? So I, the advantages are so many of really, of being bilingual, of grasping all these different cultures and just being able to like, be a citizen of the world. And I think that's what we want for our kids, especially in this day and age. You know, we 100%. want them to appreciate the diversity yep. and, and to appreciate every part of who they are. You know, going back to identity, they may think today I'm more, I'm feeling Peruvian today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like it shifts. You could feel more Peruvian. Maybe they just came back from Lima. I don't know. Or they can feel more, you know, American or from Argentina. It, they can, it shifts all the time yeah. and it's malleable. And that's the beauty of being multicultural. The ultimate test would be what Jersey they put on during the world cup. <laughs> that is, that will be the different families. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, there was a game where Argentina pay, played Peru recently, not in the world cup, clearly. Um, but literally we had two different jerseys and we switched Victoria's halfway through. So she's got to represent all of them. I, I hear you a hundred percent on that because Colombia versus England mm. mm -hmm. oh it's a good one too. <laughs> that's what like, my husband will be like but you weren't even born in Colombia I don't care doesn't I matter <laughs> my blood it's in my blood yeah. <laughs> well, it's just been fun um I think the most important message here the takeaway is that you know even beyond 
language i think it's is the culture right and yep. kind of exposing our children and i think that's the the best thing we could do for them just show them about different culture not just our very own you know yeah. just other people's yeah, yeah, culture yeah. too and just kind of expose them as much as we can in the most creative ways that we can in the most organic two ways that we can so we're not forcing it on to them right but yeah so thank you grace it was so great to have you on our thank podcast you so much thank you for having me i really enjoyed this anytime great. ladies yay thank you all right bye bye, bye.